Hello and welcome back to another Minute Tidbit Social Psychology Edition. Have you ever wondered why you start to like a new song after hearing it a bunch of times? That's because of something called the mere exposure effect. Scientists found out that the more you're exposed to something, like a song, a face, or even a new drink, the more you like it. They found out that a tiny part of your brain lights up when this happens. It's called the ventral tegmental area, where the happy chemical called dopamine comes from. But what makes you like something isn't just that, it's a crazy mix of stuff like evolution, your unique personality, social norms and your past experiences. So whether you like a person, a song or even chocolate, it's because your brain gives it value. Now, let's talk about the amygdala, another part of your brain. Imagine you're walking through a dark forest at night, and you hear a rustling noise nearby. Your amygdala kicks in, making you feel scared and helping you react quickly. It helps you decide if you need to run away, hide, or prepare to face the unknown. In this way, the amygdala keeps you alert and helps you stay safe in potentially dangerous situations. Another key player is the nucleus accumbens. This guy is all about pleasure. It lights up when you encounter something you like. It could be a pretty face, the idea of winning money, or even hearing your favorite music. It's like the DJ of your brain playing the music of joy. But here's a curious thing. This pleasure center even reacts to more complex feelings, like schadenfreude. That's a fancy German word for the guilty pleasure you get when something bad happens to someone you're not too fond of. Yeah, your brain has a wicked sense of humor. These brain areas can also predict your behavior. For instance, studies found that when you're deciding whether to buy that expensive chocolate or not, the nucleus accumbens lights up. So in a way, your brain's attitude toward things can predict your actions. Now here's an interesting twist. There's a difference between wanting something, like craving a pizza, and liking something, like the taste of the pizza when you finally eat it. They're usually connected, this is true, but they can also be separate. Your brain deals with them differently. Now dopamine, our happy chemical, is responsible for the wanting part in our brain. It's like your brain's hype man, getting you excited about the reward that's coming. For instance, if a monkey knows it will get juice after seeing a blue square, dopamine spikes when the square appears, not when the juice comes. So dopamine is really all about the anticipation of reward, and not the reward itself. Interesting, isn't it? Have you ever wondered why some things feel so good when you finally get them? Like that first bite of pizza after a long day? That's because different chemicals in our brain kick in. There are really two main groups, opioids and cannabinoids. Don't worry, we're not talking about illicit drugs here. These are naturally produced by your body. One example of an opioid is enkephalin, and an example of a cannabinoid is anandamide, which interestingly is named after a Sanskrit word meaning bliss. Some drugs, like heroin and marijuana, actually mimic these chemicals, which is why they can feel so good. By messing around with these chemicals in animals, scientists found that they can change how much an animal likes something. For instance, if they increase the activity of cannabinoids in a rat, it begins to like sugar even more. Here's the key thing to remember, wanting something, and liking something, they are two different things. You might think they always go together, but that's not the case. Scientists can make an animal want something more without making it like it more, and vice versa. Like they can increase the activity of dopamine, which makes the animal want a reward more, but it doesn't make it enjoy the reward any more once it gets it. This difference between wanting and liking can lead to some weird things. Take drug addiction for instance. Over time, an addict wants their drug more and more, to the point where it takes over their whole life. But they don't actually enjoy the drug any more than they used to. In fact they might even start to like it less. And, of course, this can happen in normal life too. Have you ever really wanted to get back together with an ex? even though you don't actually like them that much anymore? Well, that's your brain separating wanting from liking. Scientists have actually done experiments on this. They found that if they stop people from getting something they want, they start wanting it even more, but they actually like it less. So, if you're blocked from winning a prize, you'll want it more and be willing to pay more for it. But when you do finally get it, you're more likely to trade it away because you don't actually like it as much as you thought. So sometimes, we can want something without really liking it that much. Well, that's it for today's episode on how your brain decides what you like, what you want, 
and what you end up doing. Join us in the next episode where we'll discuss emotions and the choices we make. Until then, remember, your brain is a complex orchestra playing the symphony of your feelings and actions, so dance to the beat of your inner maestro. Bye for now.